Alright guys, how is it going? Just filming another quick video for you today. I'm going to do this as a how-to sort of video, so I'll try and leave timestamps to each bit. So I'm going to be servicing a Volvo V70, same for the S6 or any S60, or anything with the D5 engine Euro 3 um, in, in the phase two these usually come in. So um, yeah, I'm going to do oil, air filter and oil filter, and then I'm going to reset the service message on the dash as well so um, I'll show you which engine you want to be doing this on so it's these sometimes referred to as the black top uh, it's the old 163 brake horsepower Euro 3 D5 engine I imagine it'll be pretty similar for the Euro 4 and the 2.4 D not the D5 but um, there might be some slight differences but I, I mean the layouts pretty much the same throughout them um, this is an O4 reg car and it works from I believe I think it was like early 2000 or late 2000, early 2001, up till 2005, 2006 that these sort of came in. So what you want to do is you're just going to need some simple tools. I've got some power tools to make things easier and a simple tool set. So it's not too bad. The only thing you're going to need that's specific is for the oil filter down in there, you are going to need a 36 millimeter socket. So I've got one here. Bought this from Halford's ages ago for, probably for one of these. Um, and they're about seven or eight quid, so not the end of the world, good to have, do you for a while. So, straight into it with the air filter. So the air filter is just here, it's this, you can tell because it's a square shape with a hose coming out of it and, and the MAF sensor plugged into it. It's literally attached by these clips here, so you just, boop, boop, boop. And then uh, you could probably remove the sensor, the, the electrics for the MAF sensor and then you want to pull it uh, angle it up a little bit and just pull it towards you and it comes out of the it's like in a little latch at the back you might just need to give it a wiggle and then it's out and then you've literally got access to the air filter there if you want a bit more access I suppose you could take this Jubilee clip off here and you could remove that hose and then the whole thing would lift out the way but for our purposes with two hands it's sufficient we can just get in there and change that so I'll just do that Okay, so just move it out of the way, take your old filter out, easy as that. Uh, you can clean out in the housing as well, I'm just going to run the hoover in there just to clean it out. Okay, just clean inside of there. And the new air filter has no orientation uh, this way, just want to make sure this rim uh, seal thing is at the top and the paper accordion looking thing is at the bottom. Simply slot it in there, it's pretty obvious how it sits. Make sure it's in there fully. And then you can go ahead, just make sure you keep this connector out of the way. And you want to tilt it back and sort of from the starting from this corner, start putting the tabs into the little uh, holes that they have, the little slots. It'll become quite evident when you're doing it. It's just those slots at the back that we pulled it out of, just make sure it's going back into there. So there we go, that's in at the back. Lever it down at the front and then just put these uh, clips back on. Plug your MAF sensor back in, or the connector for it, and that is your air filter changed. Is is that two minute job. Okay, so next job, oil and oil filter. You just first of all want to take this engine cover off. It just simply lifts off. And out. Don't be afraid to give it a tug. Um, it, it's kind of on there on these like captive things uh, that it pushes down onto. So just give it a good tug and it'll come off. And all this does is just give you better access to the oil filter. So the oil filter, if you're looking at the front of the engine, where the dipstick is, just remove yourself slightly to the left of it and it's in there. And it's you basically put a 36mm socket on there and twist it out. But what we're, we're going to do that in a minute. I just wanted to prepare for it and get ready for it. So. Got a 36 millimeter socket here, six sided. Make sure it's like an impact or a six sided. So I've got that on, ready to go. Uh, I will take that off in a bit. I don't want to crack it off now because it'll make the oil come out really fast when I drain it. So uh, yeah, do that. And then what you want to do is secure the car. So make sure it's in park or put it in gear if it's uh, if it's a manual. Put the handbrake on and ideally wedge something under the rear wheels. I'm on a bit of a slope here, so I'm going to just make sure I'm extra careful. And then you want to proceed to jack the car up. So I've got a sealy jack, 
the two and a half ton limit, so it'll be absolutely fine. I find these jacks are better with the wider pads because it's just a bit more stable than the little cup type ones. So, uh, just going to jack it up from the side. If you look under the car, I'll try and get an angle on this for you. If you look under the car, I just find somewhere relatively solid. So, I want it towards the front, so I'm going to put it on this, um, this uh, tab that comes out to hold the bottom arm on. Don't know if you can see that up there, but just make sure you jack up the car um, safely and securely. If you're unsure, you could always use drive on ramps and get it up in the air that way, or there are some sort of like tabs there that you can proceed to jack it up on, but I just want it a bit more towards the front. So I'm going to jack the car up. Okay, so I've jacked the car up enough for me to get under. I've also um, made sure that it's nice and secure, uh, giving it a bit of a rock. And I'm also going to put, you want to put something solid under there, something physical to stop it if the hydraulics and the jack fail and it goes down, you don't want it coming down on you. So we have got this axle stand here. You can use alloys, bricks, anything, just as long as it's fairly secure. But I'd recommend an axle stand, they're cheap enough. So put that somewhere solid looking under the car and uh, let's get under. I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, so we're under the car now and there's this big, huge under tray that we want to take off. So it's this whole plastic thing here. Um, there's bolts all around the outside. Um, there, 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 there. And basically you just want to take all these off and drop it. I think mine has a cable tie over there, so that's going to be annoying. I'm going to have to snip that and then re-cable tie it. But <laughs> we can work with that. So take this off and then you'll have access to the drain plug. I'll put what size these bolts are in a uh, text box across the top. But yeah, you just want to take them off. Drop it, put it out of the way, and then you're ready to start draining the oil. Okay, I managed to get my under tray out of the way. Uh, I just left that one cable tied. I just twisted it around and out of the way, so that's fine. Um, the drain plug is just here. So if you're looking towards the front of the engine, it's literally, it's literally about a foot in. And it's just on the back, you'll see this big plastic housing. Uh, but really, what you're looking for is the sump. And then it's just on the back of here. So it's literally just, uh, the lighting's a bit bad because the sun's blinding me from that way but it's just here so that is a 17 so you want a 17 mil um socket on there and you want to crack it off and then you want to take it out you want to have something underneath to catch the oil i have an actual drain pan which still got some of the united oil in there but yeah let's uh throw that under and then we'll catch the oil in it um when it comes out so let's get that draining now okay so we've got the oil draining there uh, I think it's not far off done to be honest. Um, you could put it down and have it a bit more level, but to be honest, it's angled that way a little bit. So we'll get most of it out anyway. Um, it's not a high performance engine, it's not a thing. As long as we get most of the oil out, we are absolutely fine on this. So, next thing you want to do is just take your um, oil filter out. Okay, so we got that out. All you want to do is it's like a canister style, so you just want to lift this out, have some paper towel underneath ready. Um, because it will drip a bit and it'll either come out as one unit or it'll come out with the top and the in, uh, insert style so i'm just gonna put some gloves on and get some paper towel and we'll catch that coming out and it's decided to come out in two parts for me so that's not too bad so this is the this is the insert uh, sorry this is the actual container we're going to be replacing this uh o-ring down in here is the messy bit give it a little shake and then this is what you're actually getting out. This is the uh, oil filter <laughs> itself. So I'll put this in the bin somewhere, dispose of it properly, all that. Okay, so in the box with your oil filter, you'll have this new O-ring. And all you want to do is take this one off. Okay, so grab the old, um, well, grab the housing, get a small flathead or something, take off the old uh, O-ring. And then you can put the new one on. But first, you just want to put a little bit of new engine oil on it. So I've just got a bit of engine oil on my finger, new engine oil rub it all over it and it basically just lubes it up so it goes on there easier and then the housing itself actually slots in easier to the uh, to where it's located so it's on and there's a big groove for it you'll see where it's meant to go and if you're not sure just have a look where you took the old one from first so it's not that in place no orientation with this, so just snap this over and then push it into place like this. Okay, all you do next is just putting this back in here. So, slot it back in. Do a couple of turns anti-clockwise just to make sure it's seated properly, the thread. And then you just want to screw it in. So as you can see, it's going in. I'm just going to finish it off with a ratchet because I'm lazy. And then just nip it up just, there we go. Literally, it just needs to be hand tight really, like just nipping it up. And then that is the oil filter done. And all you need to do is go back underneath, put your drain plug back in, 
um, so just literally uh, screw it back on um, and do that fairly tight there will be a torque setting somewhere I don't know just do it fairly tight um, not so tight you can't get it off next time but tight enough that it's not going to weep and then all you want to do is put the under tray back on and then we'll come back up here and we'll fill it with oil okay next all you want to do is open the oil filler cap and uh, proceed to fill the car with oil so the capacity on these I believe is somewhere around 5.9 uh, but what I do is I just put it up to about 5.5 uh, check the dipstick so I'm just going to put the oil in now uh, if you've got a funnel it's a lot easier easiest to do it from a sideways bottle and then oop, yeah there we go Right, so I'll put about five and a half litres in, just checking the oil level, so if you're completely new to doing that, uh, you'll have the dipstick, pull it out, wipe it, and then put it back in. All the way, pull it out, and have a look at where the level is. So as you can see, this is just on the very bottom, so there's these two uh, limits here between the lines, and we're just at the very bottom now. So I'm going to want to just put it up till it's right near the top, not fully top or over it, but right near the top. Start the engine, let it run, and then double check it again. It's usually, as a general rule of thumb, between absolute bottom and absolute top of the limits, it's usually about a litre. But don't rely on that, just add, increment, add small increments that you feel comfortable with until you're at the desired level. Okay, so we're pretty much dead at the top now. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Oils, uh, the oil's really light until you start it, and then on diesel it instantly goes black. But yeah, so it's pretty much at the top, just gonna start it up. All right, so just check the oil again. Wipe, reinsert. And we're back down towards the bottom. So, <laughs> just gonna pull this onto the flat ground and double check, so. Okay, so oil level's back up to what it should be, uh, desired level, all we've got to do is put this engine cover back on the car, and then that is the oil and filter change done. I'm finally just going to show you the fuel filter as well. So I'll set you up, show you where that is, and then we'll get that one done as well. Okay, so for the fuel filter, it's on the driver's side if the, you're in the UK. And it's just a bit in front of the rear wheel. So you can see it, just... Uh, is this going to focus? Just there. Finally coming to focus. So there's, I believe this is a drain on the bottom. Uh, so you can have the receptacle ready and drain the diesel out of here. Uh, you don't have to take it fully out, you can just let it, but I'm going to just take it fully out. Leave that in there. And you just want to let the drain, it won't drain all your diesel out, it'll just drain what's in the filter which has been put in there in the line uh, once the fuel pump pressurises. So let that off, that'll take off the pressure as well. And then basically this whole unit just twists um, anti-clockwise. The only thing is it is quite stiff. I mean, I think there are special tools that you can get. I'm sure there is, which clip into these little uh, raised bits. But basically I'm just going to grab it with two hands in a minute, sat in front of the car and just twist it anti-clockwise. So pretend you're underneath it, anti-clockwise is that way. So just uh, yeah, wait for this to drain and then I'll do that. Alright so a bit of a ball lick to get off, what I ended up using was one of these oil filter wrenches. I really need to get a new one of these, these are like, this is absolutely terrible, it barely hooks on there anymore. But <coughs> I just put that around the bottom part of the filter onto these raised edges uh, and just twisted it. So it's really really tight, uh, if you do it by hand then fair play. Um, but if it's been on there for a while you're going to want to use something like that or a rubber wrench or even the proper tool. But I mean, who needs proper tools right? And the filter itself is there. So that's the orientation it goes in with the nipply bit pointing upwards. And there is a gasket on the actual housing which I've dumped in there, but you need to replace that. It's fairly obvious where it goes. So all we're going to do is get a new gasket, pull that on, wedge the new filter up in there, and then re tighten the housing around it. Probably not that tight. Uh, we'll give it a little nip up with the chain wrench thing but I'm not going to put it on as tight as this one was so we're just going to do that okay so now what I'm going to do is I've inserted the fuel filter fully in uh, I have made sure it was right up on the threads so these are fine to self prime so I'm literally just going to turn the oh, turn the aircon off if you just turn the key to ignition but don't turn the car on and just do that like a lot of times like as many as you can be bothered to do probably five or six times will be fine 
and basically all that does is prime the fuel pump so it's putting enough fuel into the um, into the fuel filter cavity. You can fill that up full of diesel when you're putting it back up but it's really annoying and if you spill it you're going to just spill diesel all over your face. So just do this a few times. Alright and then just try and start it. Okay so it should just fire straight up after you've primed it a few times. It might take a, it might take longer than normal to start and then it might cut out every now and again as well. Yeah, there we go, just so it's, it'll be a bit of air in the system, so what I'll do is I'll just prime it again. There we go, so yeah, it just takes a while to start. Okay, so it runs fine, so now we just need to get rid of the service um, light. Okay, so what you want to do to reset the service light, you want to turn your key to position one. Where it unlocks everything, and then you, oh, there you and then you'll notice turn your thing onto trip one. Um, you want to make sure you've got some miles on it. Hold it while turning it to the run position, so position three. So press and hold it, and then immediately turn it to position three. Keep holding it. Okay, so that flashes three times that arrow um, arrow shaped warning in the middle that flashes three times on the third release it turn the car off turn it back on no time for regular um, service message I have zero messages so I've seen a bit of information where they say turn it to position two you actually need to turn it to position three on that third one so so you have it in position one which is this one and then most people say to turn it to position two but you actually want to turn it to position three so your ignition comes on and everything like lights up so put it to position one start holding the trip reset button um, as soon as you do just turn it to position three without starting the car hold it where that red arrow is indicating my doors open that'll flash orange three times on the third one let go and you'll have got rid of your uh, service message so hopefully that'll help some of you out. Um, if it did, please leave a thumbs up, please leave a comment if there's anything you want to see explained in more detail, and please subscribe to my, my channel for more videos coming soon. Thank you.